Our friend, Jen Largesse, has been renovating her backyard, and the focal point will be a shipping container pool. Today, she's at the factory to see how they're made. First, the containers are delivered and unloaded into the facility. Keep coming. All right, good right there. Once they're in the facility, they measure and mark the height of the pool, which is typically about five and a half feet. They cut the container using a grinder and then remove the top. Now that they've removed the top of the container, they can start adding the details that turn it into a pool. Details are welded into the pool, like the steps, benches, and window frame. Finally, the wall is capped with a thick steel rim. Once the interior details are installed, the raw steel is cleaned by sandblasting, followed by a coat of primer over the entire pool. Last, they apply a multi-layer top coat that protects the pool and gives it its color. Now, this layer is extremely elastic to allow it to expand and contract with the steel as it changes in temperature. Now that the structure of the pool is complete, all the equipment can get installed in the mechanical closet below the steps. And then the lines can get attached to the jets and the skimmer, just like a regular pool. But the beauty of this mechanical closet is that everything is hidden away, but still very easily accessible for any servicing or winterization. Before the pool is shipped off, they fill it with water to test the coating, lines, and jets. Once everything passes inspection, the pool will be emptied, dried, and wrapped so that it can be shipped to its new home. But before it can be delivered, there's a lot that needs to happen to prepare the site. The first step was to have our team excavate a level area that's big enough for the pool, plus another four feet, for the equipment doors to open at one end so that we can get to our pool equipment if it needs to be serviced. To support the weight of the pool, we needed to add reinforcement at the corners. The excavator drove helical piers at each corner of the pool, and as they placed the rebar, tied in grounding wire to bond the helicals to the rebar, which will later be bonded to the pool as well. And then concrete footers were poured over the piers. We then supported the earth behind the hole with a retaining wall. Once the foundation for the pool was complete, the excavator dug a trench from the house to the footings so that the electrician can run electrical power, and the plumber can tie our gas line in for the pool heater. As a final step, we also added drainage gravel to the entire base of the area, and we added a dry well in case we ever need to have access to pump out excess water. So now that our site is properly prepped, we are finally ready to install this pool. And for that, we have Joel, who's here from the pool manufacturer. So this pool weighs roughly 7,500 pounds. Wow. Traditionally, a lull is used, a kind of a large uh, telescoping forklift mm -hmm. that can then take the uh, container pool to the back of the client's yard. In this case, I believe we're going about 190 feet up in the air, about 100 feet to your backyard. <laughs> this is not a normal lift. <laughs> no, it's not. It's going to be quite the feat to kind of see this happen. Jen, let's look at my favorite part of the container pool. So starting from left to right, we've got your variable speed pump. This is the force behind the pool that really circulates uh, all the water. To the right of that is the stand-up cartridge filter. Similar to what you have in your house, it, it really helps to filter the debris in your pool. Then over here, tucked back in the corner, is the UV filter. That really helps to sanitize the pool, kills 99.9% .9 of the bacteria in the pool, really helps to reduce the chlorine that you're using. Mounted on the wall here, that is the brains 
in the container pool. Connected to your Wi-Fi, you can actually use your phone to operate the lights, the heat, uh, the pumps, and all that fun stuff. That'll be nice when we're away as well Absolutely. to keep an eye on everything. Absolutely. This fun conglomeration of pipes, if you will, mm -hmm. is the diverter valve. Once you hit the spa mode, this diverter changes and it then sends water and air to your jets to create that spa functionality. So this is the heater that resides outside of your container pool. It is actually the smallest footprint heater on the market to date, but it does pack a whopping 400,000 BTUs of heat. Did you say 400,000? Absolutely. And so for your eight by 20 container pool, this will heat it very, very efficiently. And so we're gonna work with our plumber to hook this up, right? This uses gas to power it? Absolutely, so once your landscaping is complete, uh, your plumber will run the gas line from your house to the heater and then plumb it from the heater into the container wall. Okay. Here is the interior of your custom container pool. What do you think? I think this is absolutely stunning. Talk me through everything installed over here. Yes, so behind me is the skimmer. Obviously pulls the water from the pool into the equipment compartment mixes it with that air and gives that pulsating spinning spa feel uh, when you're uh, using the spa. That sounds relaxing. Absolutely. <laughs> and what are these down here? Yes, yeah, so you're interchanging LED lights. At night, this pool will just glow and emanate with greens and blues and pinks, really whatever color you want. We love the configuration we chose, the color we chose, and we're excited to put water in and put it to use. Thanks for asking us to be a part of it. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.